Right, in this video we're going to use one of the previous materials that are made in a previous tutorial and that can be found here on uh, Bryce Tutorials. If you look down the list you will find somewhere in here um, so I can't see these things, paint, no, 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 here we go, full spectrum material, rainbow material. So we're going to utilize the material that's made in this tutorial to create a special effect and that special effect is going to be created inside a torus. I've seen this um, optical illusion and wanted to recreate it in Bryce. So I've created a default Bryce torus. I'm going to turn it on its side, enlarge it, edit it so this central bit's quite thin and tall and then move the camera back into a suitable position so I can get a look at it. I can't see inside this at the moment. In the Skylab what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the sunlight since we're inside a solid object and I'm going to create a couple of light sources just to uh, light the inside of this on a temporary basis so I can see what I'm doing. So let's have a look. There you go. That's the inside of the torus that we're in. Right, just move the camera around and um, oh, I'm going to light it using ambient so I'll set the global ambient up and I'll set the material to the material that was made in the tutorial that I've just showed you and that's this rainbow texture and I'll put the blob in ambient there so it's got ambient components and you can see how that looks to create the surface that I'm looking for I need this uh, to be at a much higher frequency so I'm going to edit the material and I'm going to use this scaling factor here and I found that a scaling of 389 allowed the pattern to repeat comfortably without any visible join which is quite important these lines you just see on there are just shadows cast by the light sources and uh, I don't suppose I really need those light sources from lighting it with ambient do I so I'm going to get rid of those having said that you can see the structure of what we're looking at now just by the pattern that's on it right so this is mostly all going to be in the material lab in the deep texture editor so I'm going to go to the deep texture editor via the material lab so into the material lab into the texture source editor and I'm, I'm going to use this component I'm going to drag and drop it over the first two and I'm going to just work on the first component and this one I don't need the blue there I need this colour here. If I hold the Alt key down, it'll bring up this palette that allows me to set that to fully white, which is what I was after. I'll now change it to Linear Interpol 3, so you can see I've got some bands on it now. I'm going to hit these little gel buttons in the corner so I can set um, some of the filters. I don't need to mess with the noise, that's, uh, that's fine, but I need this filter here to be quantization and I'll just reset the quantize filter so I've got equal bands of black and white and this uh, phase you see I can move it around with the phase I'm going to set it at 118 and the reason for that is the way it's going to combine with the next component that's a bit fiddly if I use the left hand button I can click on these arrows and set it down or up one at a time I can't enter a figure in there that's unfortunate the next thing then I'll switch component 2 back on and that's set add but I'm not going to use add I'm going to use minimum and then in this one I'm going to again use the quantization filter and I'm going to set the aperture as one so there's only there's only one step in it and um, I'm going to modify the noise now and make it two dimensional so that then creates these black spots that by using minimum we can see a half white so we've got half black half white semicircle and then by altering the quantization filter here I can enlarge those holes so you can see more of this half black and half white circle and then I'm going to use uh, component 3 um, I'm going to just drag and drop component 2 in there because I'm going to need a similar arrangement but in this case I'm going to set that one to black and set this one to an orange colour that sort of orange colour and now I'm going to modify the quantization filter so I get orange dots and by using uh, combine here this should mean that uh, the orange dots will appear over the top 
if I can, uh, if I've got to, got to just a correct filter, should appear over the top of the other pattern if I can get this right. So, just got to set this up properly, and I need, oh, I'll need to set that at the linear interpol three so I can see the orange. So it's, it's, I want those to be dots. Hmm. A bit tricky this sometimes with the old quantized filter. Need, need it to be the opposite of the way it is at the moment, and I'll reset it. I've got orange dots there now, but I've got the wrong set it now, I need that to be 1. Again, no option to manually enter figures which would make life easier. Ah! Right, so 12 minus 2.9 sort of given me what I was looking for. So that's the pattern I'm looking for now. Everything's set up in here accordingly. So you can see we've got this blue background, orange foreground, and then half black and half white, and this is what drives the optical illusion. So if I just check out of this now, we'll have a look how that renders. So uh, we're sort of getting the effect now. It should feel like it's turning in front of your eyes. But there's some strange distortions brought on by this spherical mapping of the way it interacts with the torus. So for this, we shall try a different mapping mode. I'll use parametric, and that has some implications with the way the pattern joins up, but uh, it should be OK, but it'll just change the distribution of the dots a bit. So now, you should be getting the illusionary effect that it's sort of turning around in front of our eyes. The rendering is very basic because it's still doing just uh, with the ambient colour. So, as a final um, improvement, you can see I've got diffuse and ambient here. If I modify the diffuse to 80 and the ambient to 50, and then I'll go into render options, or use premium effects, I'll preview it in a low resolution, true ambience, TA scattering correction, boost light, set the ray depth down to 4. I have to go through this fairly quickly because you've seen me do this in quite a few videos now. And what I'm going to do is create some Trambience gel light. So I'll create a light source, edit it, Trambience optimization, use gel. Remember to include only the background, edit it, set it to normal, set the diffuse down, set the ambience up, set the transparency so it's fully transparent. Check out of that check out of that and then I'll enlarge that light source place it inside this torus I'll copy and paste that light source place it there and then we'll just have a preview of how that looks so now I've got a little bit of uh, shadowing so this central column's a bit brighter and then it's going into shadow regions at the back edge there by introducing some better lighting and uh, to get the final render then render options and set it up to well, 64 will probably eliminate noises, fairly uniform surfaces. So uh, we'll see how that how it looks and uh, what the render time is. So eight minutes is fairly large render there. And uh, I'll just I'll just pause the video and then you can have a look how it looks when it's rendered, and we'll see whether the, the effect works well at this uh, this intensity. Is it looking uh, is it looking bright enough? I don't know. It's sort of working. I think it only only works really well once it's um, once you've got a full resolution image, and uh, and I'll just pause this now. Well, that's turned out all right, but I think it would be interesting to uh, to mess with some of these settings, and also I can see a bit of noise in there, so I might re-render it at uh, at a, at another higher resolution. So I'm going to the Material Lab, and I'm going to see what happens, uh, what the effect is of of shrinking the blue portion still further and having a more black and white visible because uh, whether that emphasizes the the rotational effect or not I don't know I think the thing is to uh, to switch it back to low resolution for now and see how that looks so th I'm, I don't really know what the what the balance of these colors what effect it has and and how much has to be black and how much has to be white so that's something you can experiment with. I mean, that seems to be to be working quite well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to increase uh, the material ambient channel just to make it a bit brighter at the back. So I think it is a high contrast in these colours that uh, creates the effect. And then I'll uh, compensate for that by lowering the uh, the diffuse slightly so that it's fairly well balanced. So these uh, those lights in the foreground are not having that much effect. You'll probably get away with just doing a standard render. I just like the additional subtlety offered by the true ambience. So I'm going to set the 
raised per pixel right up and uh, I wonder if it should include depth of field mm, difficult to know whether it's going to have any uh, effect I don't know, I'll have to set it back down again if we're going to start meddling with depth of field what effect that might have if this gets softer at the back that's probably a bit too much depth of field uh, I should set it on well if it's set on the center that's going to be in the target so I'll set to current selection and then set down to 0.02 see how that looks not very much obvious effect there so uh, I'll, I'll try it again let's try um, not point one. That, I think that's probably a bit too strong. Yeah, somewhere in between then. Um, let's say not seven. Right. Ah, a little bit of depth of field. Right. So, let's see how this looks when it's rendered with these uh, fancy options set. So obviously it's going to take a while. Twenty-four minutes. So not that long. Obviously, I suppose I could increase the, uh, I could reduce the render time by changing the aspect ratio of the image. So if I was to change this to one to one, for example, then I get more of the top and the bottom in, which might be a nice effect, and uh, it'd also have the bonus of rendering faster. I could probably get away with uh, increasing the height of the torus slightly there. So okay, right, I'll stop meddling now, and uh, we'll see how that turns out. Well that's turned out alright, but I can't help but feel that the uh, depth of field effect was in the end a bit too subtle, so I'm going to turn that back up to where it was to start with. I'm going to re turn the render options down to 4 because I'm going to meddle again. So I was thinking um, I don't have to stick with the original design, it might be fun to uh, to modify things still a bit further. So I'm going to go into the material lab and instead of driving this by a set of sign, we'll use linear sign instead just to see what effect it has. So linear sign is not in the same position, so each of these will have to be modified to linear sign. And also this one as well, which is driven off sign, can now be run off linear sign. So that's uh, changed the amount of blue around the edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit more blue in than before. So I've changed the filter, shrink the blue down so it's just around the outside of this orange circle, and then shrink the orange circle slightly so there's there's a bit more blue showing and have a look at that so I've turned it down so it'll render more quickly so it's more a larger areas of blue I'm just don't know, I'm just going to increase the I'm just increase, decrease the blue slight oh it's the orange, make the orange bigger and make the blue look a bit narrower again so just uh, playing with the proportion between orange and and blue to see ha what effect it has on the illusion. It's a bit difficult to tell at the moment. That seems to be working. I'm going to tilt the camera around. There's a control here, banking control. Oh, and also I could copy and paste the original torus and I could shrink it down around the middle there and edit that so that it wasn't quite so. So it was a ring. Make the ring a little bit fatter than that. There we go and go to the materials here and uh, I could descale the Y so if I set the Y value down, I don't know about this sort of value here so if I use actual selection you can see we've got spots around, fairly evenly shaped spots around the outside of the torus now so there's a bit of extra embellishment to, to work with the fancier lighting we've got I'll copy and paste that and holding the shift key down that'll allow me to step it up by discrete steps and down by discrete set, so I've got those bits on there. So that's just add a bit of interest into that. I'm going to move the camera in slightly and I'll set the render options back up. And uh, I think that this time will be the last time, so we'll see how that one looks in a while. The completed render it's just possible to make out the uh, result of the depth of field effect here and here, not so much in the background and also you might see there's a slight line and I think this is uh, the join in the texture that's uh, been brought out by the Trambian's lighting method because I don't think that would be evident if that method wasn't used in fact huh, we can just test that now if I go into render options and regular although I lose the benefit of the light sources you can see or rather you can't see that line so uh, 
although, although obviously the image is a lot flatter as a result so I prefer the Trambian's method possibly just uh, finding some way of eliminating that it might also be the result of having depth of field so um, because there is some issue with Trambian's and depth of field so let's just test one small area yes you see they're not the line is nowhere near uh, as visible I think it is still there slightly so there is a join in the material but uh, that's as a result of incorporating true ambience and depth of field so just be aware of that but otherwise that's the end of the tutorial so I hope you found that interesting and I hope you'll have a go at uh, producing a similar illusions yourself